Oh, we're live now. Cool. How's it going, everyone? Hope everyone's had a good weekend. Um, sorry, I haven't had a chance to get a video up for a while. Um, just been a bit busy this week. Uh, I was up in Northern Ireland with uh, Tool Monster Store doing the Tool Monster Tech Tour, going around to a few colleges. Um, uh, there was a group of us, there was myself, TV Plumber, Nick Bundy, um, and we were basically just going around colleges and having a chat with students, uh, seeing what they want to get into, uh, what sort of level of training they're at, etc. Um, but enough of that, you're not here to listen to me waffle on about that sort of stuff. Um, this video is just basically going to be a quick video on how to do a full strip down on a Worcester Bosch CDI Compact. Not my favourite boiler to work on, uh, I have to admit. Um, they've just made everything so compact, like the name suggests, uh, but it's too tight to work on anything in there. Um, so I have done a full service on it. I need a cup of coffee, it's cold today. Um, yeah, I'm just going to be sorting out my shed today. Uh, as you can see, I've got a, a cylinder, a few scraps, a uh, few scraps, a few bags of scrap there as well. I've uh, got another cylinder coming out this week, so once that's out, I'm going to do a little scrap run. And uh, yeah, so that I'm going to try and film uh, this week as well as a system conversion. So we're going to be taking out an old open vent system uh, and going to be fitting a Baxi 830 Combi. Uh, so that should make a, a make a good video, video, so I'll try and get that on uh, once it's all done. But yeah, uh, this is my, a bit of my stores, uh, just trying to do a little bit of organisation today. Uh, get this intro done, uh, get the video out today, and yeah, hope you guys enjoy it. As always, if you like what I'm putting out, um, please do subscribe, uh, please smash the like button as well, uh, and drop any comments you think that might be useful uh, for myself or other engineers watching. Um, enjoy, have a good weekend guys, I'll catch you soon. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a full service on a Worcester Bosch Green Star 32 CDI Compact ERP. Boy, that's a mouthful. Uh, but as the name suggests, they've basically taken the CDI, um, the CDI version of the boiler and made it a compact version. So that it's a bit more cupboard fit, but I'm really not keen on, uh, on the design of it because um, everything's just too tight to work on, as you'll see as the video progresses. Um, so firstly, we just want to take off the flue collector uh, so to do that, it's just two two screws on the side. Um, once you've taken the screws out, you've got to pop the flue collector up uh, and then out towards you. And then you've got a rubber flue seal, which you just need to pull down, just sort of twist and pull down. That top little elbow, um, that moves in and out as well, so it just gives a little bit of wiggle room. So just give it a little wiggle and eventually it will pop out like so. And then you can see uh, the condition of the seal and everything inside, which is all going to be replaced anyway. Um, next, we want to take out the silencer. Again, you can see, you know, it, it shouldn't be that difficult to take out. But it's a Worcester. They've just made it all complicated and too compact to work. I'm sorry about my fingers there. <laughs> I know that's not what you're here to see. Um, so now just undoing the connection on top of the gas valve. This is part of the gas tube, which links out to the fan. And you can see how tight it really is in there. Um, I've got fairly big hands, but slim hands, so I can get my fingers in there. But imagine if you've got large hands or fat fingers, you're really going to struggle uh, to get to that connection. I don't know why they've made it so, so compact in there. Uh, and just uh, undoing the ignition module uh, and then undoing whatever spade connection you need to from there. Undo the electrical connections um, from the fan, um, the flue stat as well. You just want as much room as possible by undoing all the connections to give yourself enough room to move things out of the way because you are really going to be fighting with the space here. So undo as many connections as you can. Uh, undo the air pressure switch tube uh, so that allows you to swing that top elbow out of the way to gain access to the two screws which are holding the fan in place. Now that one on the top right hand corner is really awkward to get to because you have to go in at an angle it doesn't sit directly in front of you uh, so i'm using a 300 mil uh, weha bit holder uh, to be able to get my screw onto it you will find sometimes that if it starts chewing up you want to use a 7 mil socket that will also work on it so that will prevent it from getting chewed up um, undo that screw undo the one on the bottom left as well uh, and that will allow you to pop the fan out um, and pull it out in one one complete go uh, with the gas tube and the bearing plate intact. So now that both screws have been taken out, um, again, it's still a bit of a struggle 
I'm doing it one-handed. It shouldn't be this difficult to take out, but it is being a Worcester. Uh, you've got to kind of wiggle it out. You can see, you just want to make sure that that gas tube, because it's rubber, you don't want to catch that on anything and split it. Uh, because I didn't bring one with me because it's a fairly new boiler that doesn't necessarily need replacing on a full service on these um, But yeah, that all comes out just in one piece uh, Set it down on the side Have a look at the rubber tube just to inspect it Make sure there aren't any nicks or splits or anything like that in it Which I wouldn't expect uh, Not from a boiler which is this young um, And then we proceed to the next step So just remove the two screws uh, that you've just undone put them somewhere safe trust me you do not want to lose them you don't want to drop them down the back of the main heat exchanger um, this boiler is difficult enough as it is to work on so try and make life as much easier for yourself and just put all the screws in the order that you took them out um, right let's move on to removing the burner so to remove the burner is similar to the original cdi um, so you've got these little spring clips which tell you when you've tightened it enough uh, so you don't need to use a torque wrench or torque spanner or anything like that um, so you just pop these little spring clips out um, and then that will give you access again I'm struggling to do this with one hand there we go I managed to get one, get one out do that on all the rest of them and then you need a 10 mil socket spanner uh, to get onto those nuts to undo them fully Here you go, a uh, 10 mil socket spanner, ring spanner. Um, I prefer to use a ring spanner because it, it's a little bit slimmer, so you just get a little bit more room to work on inside the boiler. Um, where it's not been opened before, it's gonna be a little bit tight initially, so I'm just gonna loosen them all evenly first and then remove them all completely. Now the front two nuts, um, the bottom part will fall out, so you'll see uh, as I take them out, but the ones on the back, um, you can undo the nuts fully and they're captive so the stud will stay within the main heat exchanger it won't actually fall out um, so yeah as you can see on the front two I'm taking them out completely um, and the bottom bit falls out as well however on the back ones the studding stays in place so you don't have to worry about it falling out um, and you want to undo them completely so that you then have a little bit more easier space to remove the burner um, there you go you can see where they're stayed captive um, and they haven't fallen out and they just basically sit into these little grooves um, the burner seal uh, it's not been damaged or anything like that but i'm still going to be replacing it just to be on the safe side um, as i'll do with any full service uh, next up we want to take out these electrodes which again they are not easy to get out because of the lack of space next to it if you've got big hands you've got fat fingers good luck that's all i can say So I was struggling to get the electrode leads off first, so I thought let me try and see if I can get the electrodes out in one go. Um, so again, a 10 mil socket spanner, so you've got a nut on the top and a nut just below the electrode leads, which you might just be able to see. Um, so just loosening those off and that should allow the electrodes to fall out, which you would hope. So just be careful again, you don't want to drop any nuts or bolts uh, down the back of the main heat exchanger, so I've just managed to do that with one hand. Uh, get the bottom nut out and here is where things didn't go the way I expected it to um, so I was hoping to get the electrodes out in one go but again because you've got the lack of space on the left hand side you can't get the electrodes out with the leads on you still need to disconnect the leads before removing them otherwise you're not going to be able to get them out so so here we go there's the old electrodes finally got them out I'm just going to chuck them away and got the new ones in my hand. Uh, all the part numbers for the service, I'm going to be putting them in the description. So if you're not sure, you can either screenshot this now um, or just go into the description and I'll put a list of the part numbers that I use for servicing on this. Uh, with the electrodes, you do get this little rubber seal, so I'll make sure you replace that as well. Um, again, where the new one is new, uh, it tends to fall out. I managed to hold it in there, but I've been told that you can put a little dab of silicone grease on it. Uh, which makes sense that will just hold it in place uh, it will stick it a little bit to the main heat exchanger um, and hold it in place whilst you try and get the electrodes in because you can see there i'm sort of holding it trying to stop it from fall out um, i think i ended up having to use two hands so i had to put the camera down um, and hold it in with one hand whilst getting the electrodes in with the other there we go new electrodes going in and you can see how you have to even get them in so with the leads on 
there's no way they would have come out because you wouldn't have had enough space. Uh, even getting them in, you've got to angle them in in a certain way uh, in order to get them to go in correctly and also make sure that seal doesn't fall out. Uh, once you've got the electrodes in, quickly whack the two nuts on, hold it all in place, um, then pop the leads back on and carry on with the rest of the service. Now, I also do have a specific cleaning tool for this main heat exchanger, uh, as they do with all of the main heat exchangers, because they have to be special and they can't just make a standard main heat exchanger, which anyone can clean with a standard brush. No, they have to make something which is going to be difficult to clean and want you to spend more money as an engineer in order to be able to buy the correct tools to clean it properly. Now, I don't have this for the CDI. Uh, well, not for the compact anyway. Uh, I've got it for the CDI and the Green Star, but on this occasion, you can see I'm just giving it a clean with a wire brush um, and then I'm going to spray some water through it just to flush it through. Um, if you want to get the cleaning blade, yeah, by all means get it, but I don't know how much it is. I think it's probably about 60 quid or something like that and I can't see it being worth the money um, just to be able to clean that main heat exchanger. If you service it regularly, it shouldn't get to that stage where you need to use that cleaning tool. Um, you should just be able to clean it out with a standard wire brush and then I've just got a garden sprayer here from home base. Um, you can use like a mini jet washer or anything like that uh, just to get rid of all the rest of the deposits, flush it through into the sump um, and then obviously through the condensate strap, give the condensate strap a clean as well um, and you should be good to go. So we've got the main heat exchange has been brushed and cleaned uh, as best as I could without the cleaning tool. Uh, it wasn't too dirty to begin with anyway so um, I wasn't too worried about it. And now here we go, we've just got a change over the burner seal. Uh, although it's in good nick, um, for what it's going to cost, whenever I'm doing a full service, I'm changing the seals um, just for safe measure because I have my peace of mind that I've done the job properly. Make sure that you put the burner seal on the correct way. Um, as you can see, the indents need to go in a certain direction. So when you're removing it, make note of it uh, and put the seals on in the correct way. Again, uh, there's the part number. You can either screenshot that or just have a look in the description. Um, I'm going to put the list of all the part numbers in the description so you guys know what I've used in order to do the service on this boiler. Um, the burner itself has got a serial number etched into the front of it. Now that serial number has to face you. Um, so you make sure that the burner goes back in the right way as well. Um, so there we go. You just slide it in and make sure that that serial number is facing towards you so that you know you've got it in the right orientation again. Next up, going to be changing the bearing plate. Now, this is slightly changed on this one. The bearing plate, I'm sure if you guys have worked on Worcesters before, you know it's basically just a little flap um, between the fan and the burner. Uh, it's basically a non-return valve to stop any gases from going back into the fan and into the gas valve. Um, again, on this one, yeah, it was in good nick, but for the sake of what it costs, I'm going to change it because I'm doing a full service on it. I don't want to get a recall back for something as minor as that and having to strip it all down again. Again, Part number, screenshot it or head to the description uh, and you see uh, you're making up the part number there. Um, again, it's very easy to put in. Just have a look at how you took the old one out and replace the new one in exactly the same way. It's not rocket science. It's just follow it. Once you've got the bearing plate in, um, just give it a little flick with your fingers to make sure that the flap is in the right direction so that it opens as it goes in and shuts on the way back out. Um, now the fun part of putting the burner back in, again it's just very fiddly, um, I'm trying to do it with one hand, it's a lot easier to do it with two hands but you can see the two open ended lugs on the back of the burner, they just need to slide under the uh, under those nuts onto the studs um, and then they will just basically pop down so you've got to try and sort of look behind to make sure that it's gone in properly to make sure that the seal has been made properly, so you can see that's not gone on properly so I need to pull it out again, push a little bit to the right to make sure I can get it locked in correctly um, and then tighten all the nuts up securely. So I've got the burner in, uh, all the nuts have been tightened fully, well where they're supposed to be. I don't know if you can see it clearly in the video, um, I do manage to focus it on one of them but you can see the little hole there, you should be able to see that little hole going through that stud. That tells you that you've tightened the nuts correctly. Uh, because now you need to get that little clip through it uh, and that will lock in place so that nut can't go any tighter it can't go any looser um, so it's just to prevent over tightening uh, or under tightening so once you've got all four clips on you know that the burner's on properly 
Right, next up, we want to get the fan back into position. So that will just hook back on top of the burner. Uh, tighten up the two screws. That top right-hand one, if you find that your bit is slipping um, in the screw head, use a 7mm socket, save yourself a world of drama uh, because it might get chewed up. Uh, once you've done that, you want to get the gas tube connected back on. Again, it's very tight in there. I don't think they expect you to use spandrel grips because there's no way of getting spandrel grips back in there. Um, make sure you get the gas tube connection on the fan. Uh, and then just hand tighten it onto the gas valve as much as you can and when you are doing your 26.9 checks um, you can either spray it with some LDF to make sure that there's no gas leaks um, or use an electronic gas sniffer gas connections all done fan connections all done uh, electrode connections all done um, got the ignition module back in and now just reversing the order of all of the other connections that I've done so that's the air pressure sensor tube um, we've also got the flu stack connections uh, to do back up as well uh, and then we finally we need to put the sump seal uh, replace the sump seal and put the flu collector back on as well so I've got myself this Regan uh, air duster and mini vac um, I actually find it really handy for servicing um, because yeah it works as an air duster self explanatory as a mini vac if you've got um, a round heat exchanger which you can get inside um, you can get suck out all the deposits first before you start washing it through um, Now moving on to the main part of the sump seal um, Removing the old sump seal. Yeah, nice and easy when you're putting the new one in in this case Please follow the MIs because I made the mistake first which you're going to see here. I just got the rubber tube out um, Popped it in and I thought yep. Yeah, okay, that's it all good to go However once you have a look at the MIs, it tells you that there's a small indentation on that sump seal um, and it has to be in the middle. So you see where I point it out here, there. So I think it's basically just a molding point, but they want you to put it in the middle. Um, I'm guessing it's just to prevent it from splitting or anything like that. So yeah, do follow the MIs if you've not worked on any boiler before because they tell you everything that you need to do. Bit of silicon grease on all the rubber seals. Um, push it up back onto the flue elbow and then back into position push it back down and pop the two screws in tighten everything up So final bits now, just cleaning out the condensed trap, um, having cleaned out the main heat exchanger and everything. Uh, again, I'm not a fan of how these condensed traps are positioned within the boiler because to remove them, you have to literally take it out over the PCB. Uh, I usually put a little container or plumb tub underneath the outlet. So when I'm removing it, it's just to prevent any water getting onto the PCB. Uh, once you've cleaned it out, fill it back up with water, pop it back in the boiler uh, and finish off with your 26.9 checks. Okay guys, that's me done for today. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Hope you found it useful. Uh, as ever, really appreciate it if you guys like, subscribe, hit the little bell button um, if you wanna be informed about when of my new uploads come out. I'm done in the shed, I'm trying to get this video up tonight. We've got some guests coming over, so I need to get things wrapped up pretty quickly. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Enjoy.